Today, everyone, we are going to be talking about the five keys to successfully implement 3D printing in the classroom. There is plenty of other ones. And if you have some ideas, you can use that chat box as well. Um, so go ahead and type ideas in the chat box at some, not right now, but at some point, um, I'll open that up to uh, everyone's ideas here. So first, first and foremost, thanks for joining us. Once again, we're going to get started here in just a second, but I just want to say thanks for all of you that are coming in or all of you that may be watching a recording that we have of this. We really appreciate it. So I'm going to be monitoring this chat box. So if you have any questions throughout this quick 20 minute session, please type them in the chat box. I want to answer the things that are most important to you as the listeners and the guests on this STEM Wednesday learning session. So type them in the chat box and uh, yeah, let me know what questions you have. Um, if you already have 3D printers, say I have 3D printers in the chat. Um, I do want to know who currently is using them and uh, you know, make sure that everyone has actual 3D printers at their disposal. So type I have 3D printers if you have them in the chat. And once again, we'll get started here in one second here. I'm going to wait. I think we're a little bit past one. So uh, for those of you that don't know me, I know some of the people that are on here already know me. But if you don't know me, my name is Braden Moreno. I am one of the co-founders of Robo3D, which is our 3D printing solution at Boxlight. So I have been in the 3D printing space for almost or over a little over a decade now. So lots of experience with 3D printing technology, both inside and outside of schools. But, you know, for about the past six years or so, we've been working directly with schools and districts um, and helping them implement 3D printing technology in, in the most simplistic way. So some campuses have 3D printers, love that. I have a few. Hey, Amanda, how are you? Thanks for joining us. So once again, we're going to talk about this is, these STEM Wednesday learning sessions are usually about 20 minute learning sessions. We cover as much as we can in this short period of time, but we want to make them quick and snappy. So um, I'm going to stick around. If you have other ideas, we can talk about those uh, for implementing 3D printing, but um, I'm going to go ahead and start diving into this stuff. So the point of why I wanted to do this uh, learning session was because I go to a lot of trade shows. I talk to a lot of schools and districts, and a lot of what we hear is that our 3D printers are not being utilized or they're sitting in the back, back of the classroom collecting dust. And so the point of this, if you saw my little promo video, was I want to help you you know, dust off that 3D printer and get it used. I mean, 3D printing technology is incredible. Uh, it can impact, you know, students in so many different ways. It can impact classrooms. It can impact schools in so many different ways if implemented properly. And we've seen just some incredible stories from our customers around the country, around the world, uh, using this technology in school. So it's something if we can help get schools uh, up and running with this stuff, you know, the chances of really cool things happening or some incredible stories happening goes up exponentially. Um, so we're going to talk about obviously the five keys, but prior to the five keys, <laughs> number one thing is if you don't have 3D printers, which is why I was asking this, pick a 3D printer that suits your needs. I think that's first and foremost, the most important thing. I talk to a lot of schools that are looking for very high end 3D printers, but they've never implemented or even used any 3D printers at all. And so kind of pick one that suits where you're at in the in the journey of 3D printing, okay? So beginners, you you know, you're if you're just getting started with 3D printing, this could be a school, a teacher, a district, really go with a more turnkey system, you know? Um, and I would say a lot of what we have with our Robo 3D printers and our curriculum platform is meant to be turnkey. So uh, you can get the printer, you get access to the curriculum, something that's a little bit more ready to go, um, you know, you know, you have troubleshooting guideline, you have training resources and all at your disposal. If you're a little bit more advanced, you might wanna identify specifically what type of 3D printer you're looking for. So if you're like, hey, I'm an advanced 3D printer user and I really wanna get into using carbon fiber, right? So there's 3D printers that specifically answer that need. So be a little bit more strategic in how you're determining what 3D printer might suit you the best, okay? Now let's dive into the five keys here, okay? <laughs> five keys for 3D printing success. Some of them are gonna seem a little obvious. Hopefully I'll have a, a couple of ideas here that uh, will help, but you know these really are guidelines to ensure that things are moving in the right direction. Uh, I know there's a lot of chatter going on, but it looks like Hannah, 
my colleague uh, and our, our product manager here at uh, Boxlight is handling a lot of it. So thank you so much. Uh, first and foremost, choose your 3D printing pathway. Okay, that's different than choosing your 3D printer. Choose your pathway to getting started. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, there's kind of two pathways I define always, right? There is 3D print and teach. Okay, and I gave you a couple of resources there. I'm also going to give you a uh, link to my STEM kit so you can trial it after. But uh, mystemkits.com is a library that we have uh, of kits with hundreds and hundreds of turnkey models and lesson plans that go with them. So print and teach could be one pathway. There's also a website called thingiverse.com, which has millions of models, uh, both just normal models and educational models. So you can use 3D printing specifically to print educational models and do hands-on activities and lessons in the classroom. So it's a way to bring the learning experience to life for students, okay? So if you're, you know, that could be a good route if you wanna get started in 3D printing. Now, if you want to move in and just go straight into design, um, we'll talk about that, but there is some options for designing, right? So if you wanna do design, if you wanna do engineering, come up with design projects for your students, that might be the other pathway that you wanna take. And these really are separate. I mean, I think if you're just getting started, if you're a beginner, you wanna do more like printing models and doing hands-on activities with the students and exposing them to the technology. I think that's really important and getting comfortable yourself as an educator using it. If you're a little bit more advanced, maybe you're gonna start doing design. Maybe you wanna come up with projects and ideas um, or design challenges and start doing those in class, in a maker space, um, after school program, whatever it may be, okay? So first and foremost, uh, choose which pathway you want to get started. Okay. Uh, the bonus conversation always to have is pick your 3D printer location, right? Uh, there could be a classroom, it could be a makerspace, a STEM lab, or a media center. I think uh, each of these has a little bit of a different vibe uh, where you're going to put it at in your school. So the classroom, if you put it in the classroom, you could use the 3D printer to do the print and teach lessons, like I said, uh, to bring learning to life. If you're putting it in a makerspace or a media center, um, it might have a different energy or way you're going to use them in that school, right? The makerspace, the teachers could go in and do some design 3D printing challenges, right? At the makerspace, so you can have certain projects that are specifically designed to be done in that makerspace when a teacher brings their students in there. If it's in the media center, I would have those already prepared like next to the actual 3D printer. So if students come in and they want to check out time with that 3D printer, whatever it may be, they have projects readily available that they can do, okay? They'll come up with their own ideas eventually, but it'll get them started and get them comfortable using it. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Number two, identify curriculum for 3D printing, right? So if you're gonna have the 3D printers, so, you know, some of you that are on here, some of you that might listen to this, you may be more advanced users of 3D printers, but for the mass majority of educators that are just coming um, in front of a 3D printer, you know, they need a curriculum that's going to help them use the 3D printer in the classroom. Okay. So, and this kind of goes a little bit along with the 3D printing pathway, but identify which route you're going to go. Are you going to come up with your curriculum or are you going to look for curriculum online? So there's a couple of resources for that. Obviously my stemkits.com, which I said previously, and this is not a promo for that, but I'm going to give you a free uh, code to that as well. Teachers Pay Teacher is another great resource to find curriculum for 3D printing. So just type 3D printing in the top. Teacher Pay Teacher, and you'll see a lot of different lessons. Obviously, you have to pay for quite a few of those, but there is some free resources as well. And then Thingiverse, again. So if you go to thingiverse.com, there is an education tab, and there is user-generated curriculum for 3D printing or models for 3D printing. So identify which one of those would work well for you all. And then you can also think of lessons you currently teach. And if there are 3D printable models that you can find online to help bring those lessons to life, okay? So once again, you don't, it doesn't need to be a super overly thought out process to implement 3D printing in the classroom. It could simply be like, hey, we're doing a lesson on history and we need to print a model that goes with this historical you know, concept or this historical artifact or this historical figure, right? 
So that just kind of takes what would normally be learned in a textbook to a three-dimensional environment and makes that learning a little bit more fun for the students, okay? So you can see some examples we have in our My STEM Kids platform. Uh, there's a lot more in there, but there, we have hundreds of uh, models like this that help bring stuff that you're already teaching to life in the classroom, whether it's math, science, social studies, uh, language arts, things like that. So um, that's number two. Um, I, we're going to move ahead into number three, which is plan ahead and print more. Okay. Uh, what do we mean by that? So planning ahead. Okay. 3D printing takes time for all of you that have used 3D printers before, you know that it takes time. Okay. So this is a little graph I found or a little picture I found that was pretty interesting that shows like the different size of a very popular 3D print online, uh, which is this articulating elephant. Um, you can see kind of how long it takes to make each version of this ele elephant, right? So plan ahead and print your, if you're going to be doing models that you're going to use for teaching manipulatives or whatever it may be, plan ahead and print those um, for your students to be able to do projects or hands-on activities with ahead of time, okay? Um, you can, you know, do multiple of them together. You can uh, print pieces and things that have to be built later, but just be conscious planning ahead is very important, okay? Can't stress that enough. And then the other thing is print more at once, right? <laughs> a lot of people don't, that have 3D printers, don't utilize this enough, but you can put in a lot of the softwares, this is our specific software for our 3D printers, our desktop software, but you can put as many models that can fit on that, uh, that platform at, at a time. So you can, those all are the same model, but you can do different models as well. So if you have, if you want to print five students designs at the same time, you can bring all those models in and, and place them on the platform and print them out together. Okay. That's going to have to be, you know, it's going to take longer as you print more models, but you can do them overnight, come back the next day and you'll have your 3d models ready for those students, um, the next class. Okay. So print more models at once. Once again, this might seem uh, you know, pretty simple, but this is something that we see a lot of the times with teachers that are using 3D printers, they tend to just like print one offs at a time. And this is a really easy way to get more printing done in a quicker time for your classroom. Okay, number four, if utilizing design, build your foundation first, okay? So we're gonna talk a little bit about the foundation in Tinkercad. Um, setting up a Tinkercad classroom, using naming conventions for your students, and then something that I call print pods. So that's more of a grouping of students, but we'll talk a little bit about that, okay? So Tinkercad, if you do not know what Tinkercad is and you're in here, tinkercad.com is a free 3D modeling software, okay? So you can go in there and there's a little, when you set up an account, there's an area that says classes. Uh, or classroom, I believe. You can set up a classroom in there and you can add your students to this classroom. One by one, or I believe you can add a class roster as well, okay? Then when your students go into their Tinkercad, they can design and you can visually see everything that they're designing and creating, okay? So this is really helpful if you're managing using a 3D printer in a classroom and you have all these students designing to be able to see everything they're creating and make sure they're doing it correctly and just have a grasp on all the design side, this works out phenomenally well, okay? So go to tinkercad.com, set up your account, and then uh, set up a classroom and add your students, okay? And then the other thing we always talk about is like set up or develop naming conventions for 3D models, okay? So you can see ones that I just suggested. So, right, like when I just started, if I'm designing a ship, let's say my design challenge is I have to design a ship to carry a certain amount of weight, okay, in Tinkercad. So maybe when I get started, I can say Braden underscore ship started, right? And then as I need help, I could say help, right? Or I, and then I can say it's ready when it's ready to print. Or you can put ready to print, whatever it may be. So these naming conventions really help for the educator when they're managing who is gonna be like printing and what time they're gonna be printing and all that stuff, okay? So um, suggest implementing these with your students if you're doing design in the classroom. And then lastly is 
organizing students into print pods. Now, what is a print pod? So I know I have the same names in each of these print pods. I wasn't going to come up with 30 different names or whatever it is, 25, 25 different names for these. But what it is, is putting your group or your students, if you have a class of 25 students, 30 students, putting them into print pods, maybe you just come up with something similar to this. And Timmy, Lisa, Jamie, Madeline, and Edgar are in one print pod. And when you do a design challenge as a classroom, you only allow one of the print pods to print, okay? That way you're not printing 30 students' designs every single time, but you're printing one print pod and maybe you draw it of a hat, right? That one print pod gets to print those designs on that design challenge. Once that you've printed the five designs, everyone's doing design, which is great, which is what we want, but the actual models that you're printing, maybe you're just printing a pod at a time. Once they've printed, you cross them out, right? then they know that the next time you do a design challenge, uh, it's gonna be another pod that's gonna be chosen to print, okay? So you can do these one by one uh, and that will help you as a educator or a teacher that's using a 3D printer, not be overwhelmed by needing to print 30 students' designs every single time. I hear that time and time again, there's no way we can do 3D printing because there's too many students and too much time it's gonna take to print them all. This is an easy way to solve that, right? So get them in groups, get them designing all, get them creating, and then get them into pods. Another thing you can do is have them all design and then put them into pods, okay? And then say, hey, you guys are going to vote which design you want to move forward with in each of your pods, okay? So maybe in pod one, they choose Timmy. Maybe in pod two, they choose someone else, right? And so those people all print their designs and then they can't print next time around, right? They're crossed off, if you will, okay? So that's another simple way that you can do this. Is there any questions that come up in the chat? I don't think so, I think we're good. Um, I know Hannah's rocking it in there and answering a lot of these questions and providing some, some ideas and things like that. So thank you, Hannah. Uh, and then the last thing is turn your own ideas into 3D printed projects right? Uh, we're all creative. I mean, a lot of teachers are creative. A lot of people are creative. And there's a lot of ideas that you have that they're very, that could be very simple that could be turned into a 3D printing project, okay? It could be things for the community. It could be things that to save the world, but just you can come up with generic project ideas, put them onto the students, and you'll be fascinated at how many cool ideas, designs, and creations are, are being done with your idea uh, for a 3D print project. So I'm gonna share a couple of ideas and I, you may have heard me talk about these ideas, but Shelly Emsley, here's her turning her idea into a 3D printing project. She or heard or watched a documentary about how coral reefs were dying around the world. And she was like, hey, I wonder if I could turn my, this idea or this concept or this problem in the world into a 3D printing project. So she went back to her class and she told them about this idea. And she said, hey, we're gonna try and use 3D printing to solve this problem. And so they eventually ended up using algae-based 3D printing material and creating coral reef structures that could be planted in the ocean using 3D printers. Okay, so once again, it started out with just an idea. It started out with her discovering a problem in the world and presenting it to her fifth grade class and them coming up with these ideas of how they can use 3D printers to help change this problem in the world. Uh, another one is this school in Massachusetts. This was an idea um, that Annie Johnson had. So she said, hey, I wonder if we could go, because we're looking for ideas of, of ways that we can use this 3D printer uh, within our school or after school program. So she went out to the community and went out to teachers and went out to parents and said, hey, can you submit ideas or submit problems you want solved with product design, right? So she went out and they developed this really simple website. It was called the Design Problem Bank. You can look it up online and people could submit ideas. The community could submit ideas into this and they would get students in groups and actually design solutions to these problems. So it was a really cool project. Once again, it was kind of crowdsourced ideas, but a really easy way to get that 3D printer being utilized and to get students excited about creating something that's meaningful, right? 
So another really cool one. And then the last one is a school in California that had an idea to make prosthetics. So if you know anything about prosthetics, they're very expensive, but doing 3D printed prosthetics is very affordable, right? And so they had an idea to make prosthetics for kids. So they teamed up with an organization called Enable, uh, enablingthefuture.org. And they uh, took that idea and they partnered with this company and that company connected them with kids around the world um, that are in need of prosthetics. So they were able to build custom prosthetics for kids. And you, anyone that's listening to this, you can, if you have a 3D printer, you can sign up for enablingthefuture.org and, uh, and make prosthetics. Go check those out. If you have these ideas, there's so many different ways. You can just present these very broad ideas and say, Hey, you guys are going to design something that's going to help this problem. Or you're going to, you know, something as simple as that can help spark projects, ideas, and use of the 3D printer in the classroom. Okay, we've reached our 20 minute mark. I don't know if there's any other ideas. I do have a link to mystemkits.com. If you scan that QR code, it will take you directly to the registration page and you can use this code specifically once you filled out all your information um, to sign up for a trial of my STEM kits. So now I, I know I had, I'm gonna quickly just the design side. I didn't talk too much about all the design software. I just spoke about Tinkercad, but there is Google SketchUp and there is Onshape, which are two other 3D modeling software. So if you're getting in design or want to do design, um, you can check those out as well. Tinkercad is a little more catered towards classroom using um, 3D modeling and doing design, but the other ones are great as well. So feel free to check those out. Any other ideas? I don't think anything else came in. So thank you guys so much for attending the STEM Wednesdays. Um, Hannah, can you, I know there is a STEM Wednesday next week on early child education, right? I believe so. Um, if you can put the link to that, if you have it, if not, that's totally okay. But we do these STEM Wednesdays every week. Thank you so much. We do these STEM Wednesdays every single week, uh, every Wednesday, same time, usually about 20 minutes long. Um, we'll stay on and answer questions if you have them, but please, we're trying to get out there, get information out there, um, you know, get products like 3d printers being used more effectively. So we want, we want to help as much as possible. So uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for joining us and hope to see you at the next STEM Wednesdays. Take care.